In this chapter, we will learn about MeSH goals offered by Kangaroo Library. As mentioned briefly during the introduction, mesh geometry comprises multiple 3D points, and the topological relationship established through the connecting line edges. This is sufficient information to discretize and set up a point-particle system to simulate various forces and constraints to shape a mesh. Let's see it in action. All mesh-related goals are accessible under the Goals Mesh tab. Goals like edge lengths, vertex load, and pressure simplify the process of defining spring forces and load forces on a mesh, without the need for discretizing the geometry into points and lines. These are the primary goals from the Mesh tab that we will use extensively. Other goals in the Mesh tab are constraint-based goals to control the proportions and planarity of the faces, based on certain geometric attributes. The following example will apply spring force on a mesh plane using two methods. First using the edge length component on input mesh directly, and second using the length line component covered in previous chapters. You may open the grasshopper file provided in the resource folder to follow along. For the first method, start with a mesh plane with default divisions is 10 and 10. For this exercise, we will anchor the corners of this mesh and assign a spring force that will shorten the edge length of our mesh. To identify the corners, use Kangaroo's Mesh Utility Library and bring the Mesh Corner component into the canvas. This utility library offers additional tools to edit, discretize, and cluster meshes. We will use it in Module 3 and 4 of this course. Connect the mesh plane to the mesh corner component, resulting corner points to be assigned as anchor points. Next, connect the mesh plane to the edge length component. This component does not require the target length for mesh edges, but rather requires a length factor to be used as multiplier to derive the target length. For example, the length of each edge in this mesh is x, and if the length factor is 0.5, the goal will assign spring force to all mesh edges, with a target length equal to 0.5 times x. Let's assign the length factor as 0.5. Combine the goals using the merge component, and connect it to a bouncy solver. Reset, and enable the solver, and you'll notice that the output geometry is a line network trying to reduce its length under the given constraints. Try changing the parameter to 0.1, and the line network reduces further. Change it to 1, and the lines are back to their original length. If we increase it beyond 1, the lines will grow in length. The other interesting thing to note here is that the output is still lines and points, even though we are using mesh goals. To preview the output geometry as a mesh, we must use the show component from the Kangaroo library. This component previews geometry that is connected to it. Connect the input mesh to show, and merge it with the rest of the goals. 
While merging, ensure that show is merged as the first input. This ensures that the kangaroo output has the show geometry listed as the first output. You'll also notice a lot of null items in the output. These are kangaroo goal data types that are converted into nulls once they are computed within the solver. To isolate the mesh from this list, use the list item to extract the first item of this list. The other alternative is to connect the output to a mesh container component. It turns red because of the non-mesh items in the list. If we connect a panel, notice that the non-mesh items are listed as empty objects and only mesh geometry is identified by the mesh container component. Use the clean tree component to eliminate the empty items in this list, and we get the mesh version of kangaroo output. The second method of assigning spring force to a mesh is using the length line component. Copy the previous definition, and replace the edge length component with the length line component. Use mesh edges function to extract the mesh edges and connect it as input to the length line component. For the length input, use the length of these mesh edges and multiply it with a numeric value to assign the target length for each edge. This flexibility of assigning target length for each line is the benefit of this method. For example, for the 220 mesh edges, we can input a list of 220 different values as target length, and the mesh deformation will be non-uniform. In the edge length component, we can only use a single numerical factor applicable for all edges. This is the main difference between the two methods. Moving forward, we will be using the edge length component while working with meshes. Try this example, and vary the length factor to understand its effect on mesh. In the next chapter, we will learn about mesh relaxation applying this exercise on a three-dimensional mesh. <laughs>